And I'm willing to say here on Up and Adams that if Jalen is able to continue this type of success through the air, this could be the best team in the NFC. I am not joking. And we'll see if our first guest agrees. And here he is joining us from, I believe, the bro barn, if I'm not mistaken, a Super Bowl champion, three-time pro bowler, Al Smiles is one of the pillars of the Eagles offensive line. Lane Johnson, hi. How you doing? I'm so good. Congrats. Uh, I'm going to just bring in Marissa. Look, I'm here in L.A. I want to get the vibe check on Philly. But this is my associate Over producer, Katie. Marissa, who's Over. obsessed. Uh -huh. And everyone, in, and even in L.A., is going crazy. Tell me about what's going on in Philly. Yeah. Uh, last night was a big game for us. Uh, they had a big week against Green Bay uh, last week, so we knew we had a, a big challenge. I feel like Jalen played out of his mind, and uh, the defense really had a great game. Slay, unbelievable game. Uh, two picks, could have had, like you said, probably four, but just playing lights out, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was a big win. Yeah, I mean, Hurts put on an absolute clinic. It is the story of the day, everyone. He's the toast of the town. What do you see in him? What's the biggest difference that you've noticed between this year and last year? I, I, I just feel like there's no substitution for experience. You know, the more you play, the, the more you, um, you know, have the ability to learn more about the game and learn from yourself, so... And uh, really, you know, just took a big step forward last night. I just think the things that he can do with his arm and legs are very unique and, um, you know, makes it very hard for the defense to, to control him. I feel like offensive linemen normally love to run block lane, and you guys run more yeah. than a lot of teams do. You were number one, the number one run game in the entire league last year. How fun um, is that? And how much do you prefer it? Uh... Well, like, the past, like, for, like, an offensive lineman, like, there's very little upside to the game. Like, the best thing you can do is not make a mistake. But, like, open up the game with, like, true empty or something, that's like jumping out of an airplane, you know, not your parachute's working. <laughs> it's just get, get ready to rock and roll. But, uh, yeah, no, it, it definitely, it, it's a lot of fun getting the tee off and, uh, yeah, and I guess some flick pain instead of just taking it. Yeah, it sounds pretty fun there. Okay, we had Joe Thomas on the show, which was very fun, and he sung your offensive line's praises. Take a look. I think the Eagles have the best offensive line in the NFL because they have no weaknesses. It's also because they're they're not injured because yeah. they do things the right way during training camp. If you look at their tackles, they probably have the best duo of tackles in the NFL, Jordan Mailata and Lane Johnson. Lane Johnson been doing it for a long High time praise. at right tackle. High praise from a future Hall, future Hall of Famer. Listen, you've been on a Super Bowl team. This is that kind of an offensive line. Does this team feel special? Uh, I feel like we're very talented. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of work to be done, I think, eliminating the distractions. And uh, really, I mean, going into each game, feeling like you're outgunned or outmatched. And uh, you have to prepare that way. I think it all starts in practice. And, uh, yeah, we just have a lot of, lot of good energy and, uh, you know, kind of, you know, we're looking forward to next week against Washington. And, uh, yeah, you can, we, uh, I know we have a, a lot of ability, so it's just about taking it one week at a time. Lane, you're not even celebrating. You're already on to the next team stop. Yeah, I mean, it was a late night, too. I mean, we started at 8.30, probably got home at 1.30, so you give me it's, it's third day off, too. So. Well, I love that you're joining us. What's that torture device to your to your right? You're talking about getting better. What, what are we looking at here in the bro barn? I'm actually I'm in the corners, like where we store equipment. So there's, there's a lot of bars. <laughs> so, so yeah, beware. <laughs> it looks it's like probably, something. Yeah, my, my house is very uh, chirpy right now, so I had to get out here. I'm sure I'm, everybody's probably still celebrating. I love that. Uh, let's talk about your coach. He's been chirpy a time or two, and we love to hear it. He's incredible in front of a microphone. What's your best Nick Sirianni story? Uh, he's just an extreme competitor. Like when it comes to anything, he's very competitive. Uh, the, I guess the funny storyline last year was like, you know, he was talking about uh, our team, you know, planting the seed. And sometimes it takes a while oh, to, yeah. you know, reap the, bene reap the benefits of it. And so it was like our season last year. I think we started like one in three or maybe one in five, something like that. And and uh, so he got a lot of flags for that. I think there was something to do with a tennis match. I think he got a little bit chirpy. I think it was a giant fan or some, like some fan. Um, but, yeah, just a little friendly chatter. Uh, so that, I thought that was pretty funny. Chirping and chatter out of Nick Sirianni. So much credit to him for uh, what this team has been able to do in a short period of time. Uh, I, I want to talk about A.J. Brown. I've talked about him a lot here on Up and Adams, this new show that I'm doing, and he's obviously always open. I think he's the best addition made uh, in the offseason as far as wide receivers are concerned. What did he bring to the team that was missing? Uh, he just has a presence about him, a, a physicality. I mean, you look at him, he's you know, 6'1", probably 225, 230. And just, he runs, I mean, as soon as he, when he catches the ball, he's just very violent with how he runs. And 
um, yeah, he just has that, that dog in him. I think he sets a tone <laughs> for the room. You know, he sets a tone for the room. I mean, really for the building. I mean, he's just a very uh, special talent. Uh, has a lot of, you know, unique characteristics. But, yeah, he does. He sets a tone for our football team. Yeah, you can tell out there. And what a connection between Jalen Hurts and himself. So all week long, yeah. the framing, you know, people who wear these microphones and put on the makeup and do the whole thing and sit with this lighting, they are all saying, how can you stop the force that is Justin Jefferson? I was one of those people. But it should have been, how can Justin Jefferson possibly get busy when he's going up against Darius Slay? You could tell watching last night from where I was sitting on my couch that it meant something to him. Did it feel like the defense was extra locked in this week? Because that was a message sending bounce back. Yeah, I think that. And then having our, you know, the home crowd advantage, having that noise, um, you know, that really is a big factor. But, yeah, I think, you know, talking about Slay, he just he played out of his mind. Um, you know, it's, it's very hard to be a true cover corner in this league, going against the best athletes, uh, you know, on the field, week in, week out. Um, yeah, played out of his mind, and he's a man. He's uh, was voted captain this year. Uh, he's 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 a great leader for all the the young guys. It's a good example, and and how he plays is just uh, unreal. So it's fun watching. Is he underappreciated? I feel like uh, you know he's he's got a great he's got a great personality, but just the way he plays, his ball skills, how fast he is, he's a he's a dynamic player. He's uh, he's unreal. You, you mentioned Washington. It just hit me because I haven't even looked at – I don't look at that schedule till tomorrow. But you're going to face yeah. your old quarterback who you protected for so many years. You're facing Carson Wentz. How will yeah. you feel playing against him? Man, you really go into the game just trying to be emotionless. It's not like I'm out there trying to tackle him. So it's like, uh, <laughs> you know, what's your defense? Well, I want to win this game. Uh, that, that, that's the plan. But, uh, yeah, um, that's really what it, what it boils down to. Uh, you've been in the league 10 years. It's incredible. Congratulations on that. And you have a very unique relationship with your fan base there in Philadelphia. And you're a Texas mm -hmm. guy. You enter yeah. Philly, different worlds. I even saw a video of you that they had up yesterday where you're telling Philly fans to get drunk, responsibly, of course, but to go have a good time before this game. What does that fan base mean to you? I think they listened. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, it's just, you know, uh, there's nothing like a Sunday there at the link. I mean, people tailgating. That's what people look forward to all year. And, uh, yeah, really, um, they bring the energy uh, week in, week out. And, uh, it's, I mean, it's truly a football town. Like Texas, like you remember the movie Friday Night Lights. And this is how this place is here. People love football. It's all they, um, that's all they know. That's all they love. So when you, when you get a crowd like that and they get involved into, it, into a game, it makes it special. Yeah, there's just a couple more questions for you. We did, there was a fun tweet yesterday the producers pulled up that somebody, you know, everyone's talking Super Bowl now after how you guys look offensively and defensively. A Bills-Eagles Super Bowl in Phoenix, says Bill Barnwell, during Waste Management Open Week. Yikes. Your thoughts. <laughs> uh, what, does Nick, what does Nick Saban say? It's all, it's all rat poison. It's all bad for you just to, to read any of it, to yeah. get too much into it. Uh, it all makes for good headlines, but like I said, it, it, it goes down to – week in, week out, and being consistent. And so that's something we got to learn to do. You're a perfect consistent. person for that locker room to keep everybody level-headed. You said it, eliminate distractions. You're a veteran in this league. Uh, and last year you were detailing your challenges with anxiety. There was an, you know, an intense NFL season, of course, that you were playing through. Has that approach or has it sort of changed your approach to this year and any thoughts on life post-football? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just really about adapting and learning more about yourself. I thought that's what I ultimately – did was just learning more about myself and uh, became better at the end of it. I, I can play my best football and uh, really in a good headspace. But yeah, um, you know, talking to people, I feel like a lot of the younger generation uh, would just, it's just a new dynamic uh, that kids face nowadays. And so I think just talking and being open with people is the, is the best remedy. What were some of the resources that you sort of took advantage of? You've been so open about this. I talked to Brandon Marshall about it on Friday. Everyone's open about mental health now, uh, especially in the NFL. It's really great to see. What were some of the resources you took advantage of last season into this season that you can maybe share? I uh, really just seeing, you know, sports psychologists or therapists. You just really had to learn more about yourself and break down some of the walls that you may have, you know, being prideful about stuff. Um, yeah, I would say that. It's really about communication and being being honest with yourself. I feel like men sometimes can be very uh, stubborn. I know I can speak for myself and be very stubborn. And so sometimes it's hard for us to, I guess, fully express ourselves. And so learning to do that and, and being open with your teammates, I feel like in the end it's just um, the best thing.
It's about communication. We are communicating to you. Yeah. We love to have you on the show. We are celebrating a victory Tuesday with Lane Johnson. Go get yourself some Mickey Mouse pancakes and mimosas in there. Yeah, yeah, we'll go find that. <laughs> All right, thank, thank you. you so much, Lane Johnson. Of course, we love having you.